Okay, we are live. Uh, well, I'm live. You're watching a recording, but I thought this would be a fun way to check out some different objectives, some uh, different tiers of objective corrections uh, while looking at some pond water from a local creek. So what I've got for you today are three objectives. They're all 10x objectives, uh, but one is an achromat, one is a plan achromat, and one is a plan apochromat. What we're looking through right now is a 10x achromat. And specifically, this is the 10x achromat that comes with the Journey to the Microcosmos microscope kit. So this objective, what you can see is that in the middle, it looks great. I think so anyway. Um, these objectives are absolutely totally fine for uh, normal viewing. They are pretty much the standard if you buy a microscope from 200 to $500 new, so a Swift or Amscope or Omax, these are the kind of objectives it's usually going to have. And what you'll notice is that when I get the, the center of this image nicely in focus, the periphery uh, is blurred out. And that is a function of this objective not being corrected for field flatness. So what's happening is the image that's being projected to the camera sensor right now is not flat. It exists in focus everywhere, but only on a spherical surface, uh, essentially. So <clears throat> if our image sensor was uh, curved as well and matched to that, it would look a little better. But since our image sensor is flat, uh, then only one part of this image can be uh, in focus at, at a time. So uh, for stuff in the periphery, I can get that in better focus. It doesn't look quite as good, but it, it looks fine. But when I do that, the center is definitely way out of focus. So like I said, this is fine for normal viewing, uh, especially because you know if you're looking through the eyepieces, you're going to be mainly perceiving uh, the center, the center of the image circle. Things that are slightly blurred on the outside of the image circle aren't going to bother you so much. But if you want to make uh, nice videos or photos, then you might consider buying an objective that has field flatness correction. And those are referred or known as plan objectives. So I'm going to switch over now to an Olympus D plan objective. And once I get this nicely in focus, you'll see now that this crud up in the uh, top left corner is nicely in focus while the center is in focus. And that is why uh, plan objectives are generally recommended if you want to do a lot of video microscopy or photography. Now, this plan objective is a plan achromat. So it's an achromat, just like the previous one. The plan refers to field flatness correction, so the image is not curved at the image sensor, but it's not necessarily achromatic correction. So an achromat is defined by bringing two wavelengths to the same focal point. And for most achromats you're gonna be looking at, that will be uh, red and blue wavelengths. Green will be focused to a different depth. And a manifestation of, this, uh, of these colors not being focused to the same point is that if I go out of focus, you'll notice a green tinge around the darker areas of the image. And if I go back in focus and then out of focus in the other direction, you see a purple tinge. And what's happening right now is that since we're farther away from that red-blue focus point, that red and blue light is more blurred than the green light, and that manifests as purple fringing. 
And if we go back the other way, now we're farther away from the green focal depth. And so we get green fringing. So, you know, it's up to you whether or not this is a, a deal breaker. Um, I do find it kind of uh, uh, distracting. Uh, sometimes when you're when you're looking at stuff, uh, the out of focus green can look like actual green stuff, and then you go to look at it and you realize, oh nope, it's not green stuff. Um, <clears throat> but uh, generally speaking, it's definitely a huge upgrade uh, for video quality and photo quality from Acromats, and they're not too expensive. I I don't remember exactly how much I paid for this objective. I want to say somewhere around thirty dollars, maybe maybe forty, uh, with shipping. So, this is a, a pretty good objective, but we can do better. So, what we need to do to improve this is to not just have red and blue at the same focal distance, but bring green into the mix too. And when we bring three wavelengths together to the same focal depth, we call that apochromatic correction. And it's pretty common that if you find an objective that has apochromatic correction, it will also be corrected for field flatness, making it a plan objective as well. So I'm going to switch over now, and we have an S-Plan APO objective. This is an Olympus objective. It would have been made, you know, between 30 and 40 years ago. And it is one of the best objectives that you can buy today for a 160 millimeter tube length microscope, which is going to be most microscopes an amateur microscopist is using. So uh, just like the previous lens, this is also plan. So if I'm focused in the center, uh, then the top left is also nicely in focus, uh, but it also brings green, red, and blue to the same focus. And that sort of translates into a few subtle changes. So uh, the chloroplasts inside of this algae, for instance, I feel like are, are a bit better represented here. Um, small details in color are better preserved. And then the other thing is that if I move out of focus, I don't see that same color fringing. I see a much more natural blurring, something that I would, you know, it's if you've done regular photography before, there's the, the word that everybody loves, bokeh. Uh, the bokeh on these S-Plan Apo objectives is a lot more pleasant. Oh, check out these paramecium getting very cuddly with each other. Um, so uh, this objective also has a higher numerical aperture than the other two. That means it can resolve smaller details uh, more accurately. That's generally something you're going you're to find on higher end objectives. And it is very it's a very good reason to buy these objectives as well, besides the improved chromatic performance. Um, <clears throat> but you will expect to pay uh, <laughs> at least a hundred dollars probably at least two hundred dollars for these apochromatic uh plan apochromatic lenses and uh so let's just go ahead and uh quickly run through them again so you can kind of refresh and 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 make some judgments here so here is the journey to the microcosmos objective again pretty much the same kind of objective you're going to get regardless of, of what new microscope you buy. It is pretty good in the center, not so good in the peripherals. If you want better peripheral imagery, you can get a plan corrected lens. And when you're in focus in the center, things that are in the same depth, that are the same depth within the slide will also be nicely in focus. So here, this, this paramecium, which if I switch back to the uh, achromatic lens. If I focus just on this algae, you can see this paramecium is just a little bit blurry, a little out of focus. It gets worse and worse as it, as it goes away. But if I switch back over to the plan objective, then that paramecium looks just fine, even when it's all the way over to the left.
<laughs> in fact, all these paramecium uh, look great. But if you really want the best image quality that doesn't have, I'm going back to the plan here, doesn't have this, this purple and green color fringing, then you want an apochromatic lens. And this lens is going to be more or less the best you're going to get, you're going to get uh, for 160 millimeter tube length. Um, so one more quick thing to note, uh, there are corrections in between plan and non-plan, as well as between apochromatic and achromatic. So there are semi-plan objectives, which are semi-plan. They're, they're uh, flat over more of the uh, image circle than a normal achromat. Usually it's going to be good enough for any kind of video work you're doing. Uh, there's also uh, semi-apochromatic lenses, which are more commonly referred to as fluor lenses. That's F-L-U-O-R. That's short for fluorite. It's a type of glass that is used for chromatic aberration control. And those still bring just red and blue to the same focus, but the green is moved in a lot closer. So they're just slightly not apochromatic. So with that, uh, I think I'm going to sign off here. Uh, if you are interested in more videos like this or just cool videos of microbes in general, I encourage you to subscribe. I'm definitely going to be putting out more content on the basics of microscopes, uh, optics, bugs, whatever. Uh, it's going to be great stuff. And um, I'm sure you'll be interested. Uh oh. Oh my goodness. We have a bubble closing in. I got to wet the slide. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ah, crisis averted. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, well, uh, with with that act of uh, of saving, uh, I think we're we're going to be done for today. Uh, I've been Jason from Diatoms Diatoms, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.